Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bikini in the Brain. I'm here with the lovely Ashley Kaltwalser. Hello everyone. No big deal, just the most winning IFBB pro of all time. She doesn't oh, like me saying that though. you know. <laughs> But we have a we have a different type of podcast for you. Today. Hold on, you didn't introduce yourself. Oh, I know that's so they're gonna fr- presumptuous like, of me to just yes, like, assume like, you know who I am. <laughs> oh, no big deal. You guys he should just needs know no who I am. Yeah. He needs no introduction. He needs no introduction. You already know Adam Adam Bonilla from TeamElitePhysique dot com. We uh, we do a little bit of this training stuff over here on this side of town. <laughs> in the, in the in the on the online world, so. There is this, there is this uh, food pyramid kind of study thing that came out, and it sent the whole internet awry. It broke the internet. I even heard about it before you told me about it. Yeah, Joe Rogan was the first time I heard about it. Did mm. you see it on the Joe Rogan? Or? No, I saw it on Twitter. Okay, so yeah, so Joe Rogan posted it, and then it just went kind of, it just, from that's where I saw it, and I just saw it popping up everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and if you guys want to kind of know what we're talking about, we're putting it up on the YouTube here, but it is... Um, this food chart that showed Lucky Charms healthier than ground beef, than whole eggs. <laughs> um, it showed almond M&Ms healthier and better than ground beef, than <laughs> low-fat mozzarella cheese, a whole fried egg. And the, the one that was really like, okay, this is a little ridiculous here. Uh, what, that was already ridiculous, but, <laughs> but there's even more. The one that really got me was um, a frosted mini wheats and... Uh, it was frosted mini wheats and honey nut Cheerios were better for you uh, than a than a skinless than a skinless chicken breast. Even oh my god, were the <laughs> the vegans behind this? What's going on? Yeah, so this one this one was like okay, let's you guys are being a little obvious about the uh, the lobbying and the funding of these studies, and uh, and it, it just got it's gotten so ridiculous that they're just like pushing it and uh-huh. pushing it. And pushing it, and it's like, oh well, they're just completely stupid now, and it's, they're just going to believe anything we put in front of them. It's way too obvious now. <laughs> like, I think they crossed the, they crossed the line now. I think it's um, maybe it's good they went this blatant about it, you know? Because yeah. now it's like, whoa, anybody with any common sense is going to say like, there's something up with this. So maybe they uh, they pushed the envelope a little too far there. It seems to be like how it goes, right? Yeah. What's what's crazy is that when this stuff comes out, everyone's so fast forgetting and so fast forgiving though that they just like don't remember it. I'm one that like keeps a note. I'm like, no, I remember when you guys told me this, you know? <laughs> so I'm not gonna just blanketly listen to you because you have a three digit or a three letter acronym and you're from the government. Like I'm I'm you know, I'm very open to hearing all sides of it and I wanna see what if you're right more than you're wrong, then I'm gonna listen to you a little more. But if I'm seeing a constant you know, funding of your studies and a, and a blatant, you know, bias to those people, I'm going to call it out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So guys, uh, it's an unfortunate thing, but um, I do think it's important. And I also think it's important because unfortunately it gets passed down to generations because these things will come out and they stay around for like eight years, 10 years, 15 years. And then people are kind of um, living by it. And then when you live by it, your your kids start living by it, and then their kids start living by it because your mom said, you know, it's like, oh, my mom said I should eat this, right? And it's funny, we're, um, uh, you know, Kimber and I were eating. I just it was a funny thing. Just we we're eating this weekend at this place called Samurai. It's like a hibachi place, and there is a, a Vietnamese. Like one of the cooks was Vietnamese, and I was we we're just we always talk to these guys when they're doing the hibachi grilling and stuff. And I was like, what's your favorite favorite restaurant around here to eat? And he's like, oh, I eat my own food. And I was like. I'm like, he's like, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, I eat Vietnamese food. He's like, he's like, I think we all eat. I'm like, that's funny. Cause I eat like Mexican food. It's like my, one of my favorite things. So it's just, the point is, is that you kind of eat what your family serves you, you know, like for him, he was in Las Vegas and the favorite thing for him to eat is Vietnamese food, right? Which he, cause he's from Viet, Vietnam. And for me, it's like Mexican food. Cause I'm, you know, my family's from Mexico. <laughs> so it's like, it's just, it's funny cause it, it translates. And when you get these government guided, oh, you should be eating this. And then you grow up eating that. Well, that's what you're going to eat, just like he did. And he was probably 50 and I'm 40 and, and I'm eating this stuff still, you know. So it's like whatever you're kind of trained to eat, you eat from your parents, right? And if your parents are being trained that this is better for my kids and they don't know any better, well, that's how, you know, these things go. And I think, you know, diving into it um, a little bit with, <laughs> with, with our, how it affects us is that where is that information coming from that you thought these things should apply to you too. And I think that that's really important to talk about because I have, you know, you have your coach too. And you have girls that are, you know, let's say, I don't know if you have any, but I've had girls that are 4'10", 4'11", 
90 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, they're seeing someone like, let's say, Elizabeth or Louisa, who's eating 4,000 plus calories, and they're eating 1,000 calories, right? And they're like, well, I should be eating more. And I'm like, you're 90 pounds, <laughs> and you're, you work at a desk job, yeah. right? And she's like, well, the government <laughs> says I should be eating 2,000 calories and whatever, right? I'm like, the government also said Lucky Charms are better for you than oh, they grow you. Yeah. Like, you know, so like, we have to understand that there is huge variances on how it's going to apply to you. And just because like, it says you, it's like somewhere out there, they come up with some arbitrary number that you should be eating a 2000 calorie diet, which is like, you know, all these things are based on a 2000 calorie diet. And somewhere that got uh, misconstrued and like everyone thinks, oh, I should be eating at least that much. Or I'm, I'm severely undernourishing myself and I'm unhealthy because I should, because I'm, my coach has me eating whatever, 1,100 calories, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's right. There's a lot of scenarios where that might be a requirement for you while you're in prep. Like it, right. you know, where it's still perfectly healthy. Like Ashley moves around quite a bit. Um, she does work a desk job for the most part, most of the time now, I guess, you know, when you're in the prep center, right? You're yeah, at a desk. Not, not like a full time or yeah. anything. I mean, three days a week, yeah. I work at the desk for a few hours. So I wouldn't I'd say average, I would, right? I wouldn't say, mm, I, I would say that's a lot less than the average desk job, but that's true because you're up a lot. Yeah, I mean, and I'll it's say, only for a few hours. It's not like true. So, it's, what do you think? Average step count? Would you consider yourself average oh, for? Yeah, in the summer yeah. though, it's a lot That's more because I you can walk. walk to Planet Fitness or Orange Theory, um, and you know, whenever it's more uh, when we have longer days with more daylight, I think everyone by nature walks around more too. But I would say uh, my steps are a little above average. I, I don't know. That's a good. You know, I really should count them. I I don't have a, a little <laughs> yeah watch or anything so so let's 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 say she's average and she's at you know 120 pounds or so her maintenance calories are anywhere between well now they've gotten up a little bit this time but usually around 17 1800 this time they're at 2000 mm -hmm. and that's her being working out five days or six days a week work doing sometimes doing orange theory you know four or five times a week depending on when not she's yet in the show. Though, but not yeah. yet yeah <laughs> we haven't started cardio yet guys for yes. this uh, arnold prep it's it's uh she's she's aching to get started with cardio she's like can we can we start cutting down yeah. <laughs> she looks great this is going great but it's funny that tells you too hey every prep's different right true there were That's some true. arnold's where we were like just already, you know, killing it on cardio. And now we're like, no, let's maybe wait a week again. It's like, it's, it's nuts, you know, if you don't need it. Don't do it. Exactly. So, uh, but the, per, the, the point of it is, you know, you have someone who fits in, in, um, on paper, Ashley's like five, five, one twenty average step count, not too far from like the average, average person at five, five, I would say the average person is probably one thirty though. So, but when you look at her numbers, she's still not at 2000 calories, this is like the first time we've been at 2,000 calories in for, like, forever. But everyone thinks, even the 411 girl, 410 girl thinks, oh, I should be at 2,000 calories because the, it's somewhere on some study. It said so by the government funded whatever, right? Yeah. So I think that that we ha we need to look at things and we need to stand back from things and look at things objectively and like, okay, where do I fit into this? And what what percentage am I as the norm? Am I like 20% of the norm? Am I way past the norm? Let's say Ashley was an Orange Theory instructor and instead of coaching online she did personal training in person and also did our our booty classes that we have here and she taught them six days a week well she's gonna be probably closer to three thousand calories in that scenario right so it's it's totally different based on your lifestyle based on you know if she was a woman's physique competitor maybe she'd have you know she'd have even more calories right so a lot of things go into this and we have these like norms and i think that it's important that we talk about where they come from um how they're wrong and they could misguide you in some scenarios, not in all scenarios, but in, in, in how they're, you know, funded by lobbyists that own these, you know, that work for these big companies that are trying to get government to say, hey, use more, eat more of my product. And that's the reality when it comes down to things. It's very unfortunate that it's that it's like that, but it, it, that's just the reality of things. So we, um, me and Ashley, we did some digging and uh, we did some research on previous pyramids. And it's just kind of cool to go over like the history of how our, how our food has evolved here. And just to show you guys too, because I think that, too many of us are too quick to just take what they're saying at, at their word. Yeah. I used to be like that. And then I used to be like, oh yeah, it's government. So I'm going to, whatever, you know, they're, they're smarter than me. They have all these specialists and this and that. I used to always think that until, well, until 2020 hit that I realized how dumb most of these people are. And I was like, man, this, they're not that intelligent. Like this yeah. is a pretty obvious scenario here where you mm -hmm. can see you're not doing the right things. We won't go into that, but, <laughs> but it was like, to me, it was like, wait, you guys all don't see this? What's going on here? And it's obviously there is 
some money pushing direction, right? And so the same thing happens with our food. And um, it just, it's, it's, an, it's really unfortunate. You guys do have to do your own digging. But especially when it comes to prep, you have to understand like these norms that people set out for you that are like government funded, like this is what's really happening on it. And when it gets to your plate, you're like, oh, this coach had me do the wrong thing or my coach had me do the wrong thing. I was under eating. Well, under eating to compared to what? Like compared to what, you know, the the who sent you, you know, told you yeah. to eat, right? That's funded by, you know, Nestle or whatever, right? It's like, w- like, I don't understand where you're getting that information. Like yeah. who told you you're under eating? Because someone else who was eating like Louisa or whatever was eating 4,000 calories and you're not, now you're <laughs> under eating, you know, like, so- like, where do you get, where you get, you have to like really see, okay, what, at what point am I doing things wrong? Or at what point am I, you know, facing the reality of my sport is a physique sport and it's not going to be the most optimal health diet anyways. And am I so far past that where I'm really malnourishing myself? Like, yeah, if you're eating 600 calories, you're probably malnourishing yourself, yeah. you know, but there are some scenarios where like, uh, you know, exactly the 410 girl she's gonna burn less calories you know exactly and like i think it's funny when people make that argument and then they'll be like maintaining a 30 percent body fat i'm like no you're you're good (laughs) don't (laughs) don't worry that's you're not you're not starving over here um but yeah i think even i you know i still hear it from time to time as well the whole um artificial sweetener argument to you because another one of those like um sponsored study things from back Back in the day when I think they tested aspartame on rats and they found negative side effects with the rats, but at the same time they were pumping the rats with pure aspartame yeah. that were like equivalent to their body weight or whatever, like a, like an amount that a human would never be able to even consume if they tried of pure uh, aspartame. And you'll still hear from time to time like aspartame's worse for you than sugar. It does the same thing or your brain doesn't know the difference, or it's going to give you cancer or something, it's better to go with the full sugar Coke than the diet Coke. And it's like so silly. It's such a silly argument because when you look into it deeper and more precisely, that that study does not hold up at all. Like it's not some conspiracy that aspartame is bad for you. It's more of the, I think it was what big sugar or something sponsored that with, with, with um, an amount that would never even be able to be consumed by human, like yeah. uh, weight, uh, body weight comparison wise. So it's crazy, but you'll hear that from time to time. And it's like, oh my goodness. And, <laughs> and then you get the documentaries on Netflix and then it, it pushes some sort of agenda, whether it be about seafood or being vegan or whatever the case may be. And it's like, mm, if you look into who's like paying for this, take a look, you yeah. know? It's unfortunate that, but that's exactly what that one was. Yeah. It's, hey, study aspartame, and I'm going to give you X millions of dollars, whatever it is, until you find a problem. And once you find that problem, exploit that problem. And then because the weights are so hard to understand for a for a human, like when you look at when you look at, so if I were to, if I were to do the study on a human, let's say I did it on on Ashley, and I was like, okay, in this study we used, um, let's say, one pound per. 10 kilograms of weight or 10 kilograms of weight for Ashley. Pure aspartame. aspartame. Not not talk about Diet Coke. That's diluted. We're talking uh, pure aspartame. (laughs) Everyone would look at that and be like, wait a minute. How does she even consume a pound of aspartame? Yeah. And even those packets are not pure, just so you guys know. And then they'd be like, okay, wait a minute. So then if she's 120 pounds, whatever, what is that? Six pounds a day? Like no one's going to eat that. Of course you're going to have a problem at that. You have a problem with that much water at a certain point. You know what I mean? So people have died from too much water, you know? So- (sighs) So it's it's one of those things where we really do have to look at the studies, look at who's funding these things, look at who's telling you what, and and at least like be open to it and don't just trust like, hey, government's out for the best for me because they're out a lot of these times. It's out for putting money in their 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 nephews' pockets who are running the study type of thing, and they're you know that's how these things all work. It's it really sucks. It really does because I mean I wish there was more ethics up there, but you know. Money is a money is a strong driver of people's actions, unfortunately, and that's just the that's just the reality of the world, you know. So, um, I think that it's it's just so important for people to kind of see something so blatantly um, out there like this, because then you can look at all things and be like, okay, wait a minute, who paid for what study? There was one a few years ago where they were saying like coconut oil was like the worst thing for you, and I I researched it like hell like hell, and I found out that it was a canola oil company paid for the study th- under a different name that you wouldn't associate, but you had to like look for it, right? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's those people trying to hurt one thing to 
to, to help their brand go better. So let's, let's go into a little bit of history of this to kind of further show this. But, um, one of the, one of the funny is the, the first like food pyramid, if you want to call it a pyramid, it wasn't really a pyramid. It was more of a chart and it was, um, the seven healthy food groups. So it was the seven healthy food groups. And it's, I'm going to go into just a couple of these food groups here because you're going to be like, wait, that's a full food group. So one of the full food groups, and this is like the first one, um, by the government, the full food group is butter and fortified margarine, and they're split up into equal sections. So just as much butter and margarine you should have as lean chicken breast. <laughs> that seems like, that nice. seems reasonable, right? <laughs> so nice. group one is like uh, vegetables, totally understandable. Group two, I mean, you know, fruits, great. I get that. Group three, uh, potatoes and other vegetables and fruits. They actually have two different fruits. One's oranges, tomatoes, and grapefruit. Back And this is old. This is like, you know, in the 50s, I think, when this came out, maybe even, it was that during time of war, I know that. So mm-hmm. maybe, I don't know my history so well. I'm, why are Americans so bad with history? You know, we're, we have like the shortest amount of history too, though. I know. You know what? <laughs> Hugo was even telling me a little no, bit about worst. American history, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know. It's, like, <laughs> it's a cultural <laughs> thing. He's from Brazil. <laughs> it's a cultural thing. Is it the weirdest thing? Americans... American, I'm on Americans, America. <laughs> Americans, these so Americans oblivious. don't know nothing about their history. The, so, <laughs> Americans don't, uh, yeah, it, like we have the shortest history. <laughs> and geography too, we're bad at, yeah. really bad. I'm really bad at geography. I'm like, I'm like, wait, where is that? I'm like, like Ohio, I'm always like, oh, that's like an hour Any from here. Any girl <laughs> that's from like a smaller town or isn't from like New York or LA or someplace like that, she's automatically from Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I think it's a farm girl. Yes, she's a farm Apparently, girl. Apparently, according to Adam, there's like four states. Yeah, it's like Miami, New York. It's not even a state. It's just like the city. Vegas. San Francisco, and then just Vegas, so everything LA. else is Ohio. <laughs> everything else is Ohio. <laughs> everything else is a farm town. Yeah, it's so bad, especially when you're from LA. It's like you just automatically <sighs> think that. it's So anyway, going into these, these groups, um, this is like during this. So this seven... Uh, the seven food groups came out during the World War. Yes, so when when we had some scarcity of some food items. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So um, so what was the reasoning for this one? Now it's funny is that if you look at this chart, it says for health and health is big, and this is actual an actual copy of the ad. It says for health and that's big. It says eat some from each group every day. Um, in addition to the basic seven, eat any other foods that you want. Right. So what was going on? where this became a thing, right? Was this for our health, right? Which that's how they frame it as for our health. Well, what was going on is there was a lot of problems with, obviously there's a world war going on. So getting, uh, getting oil was an issue and farmers needed oil for the crops, for their farm equipment to get the crops. So food wasn't at its best, right? There was a scarcity of some foods. So how do you pump calories into people? Because you need big, strong soldiers in case they get to the draft, in case another war breaks out. You feed them butter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> calories calories are easily easily uh, available that don't require so much farming that are you can make you can make very easily with low ingredients. Breads, throw butter on it and you can get these guys to have some weight on them so you're not running into skinny soldiers that are that are famine mm-hmm. going into war, right? Right. The other theory was you'd also get the women bigger just in case they needed to do the men's jobs when the men were drafted into war not to be sexist, but back then they, they would only take the men. Right. So, so it's a, it, it, that was some of the theories too. So it was about getting people bigger. It was nothing to do with your health. It was about, okay, I guess the health of not dying would be one of them. Mm-hmm. Cause people were about nursed, right. but they didn't frame it that way. Yeah. It would kind of make sense, I guess, if they didn't put health, like as the main thing for your health, like yeah. you should be doing this. Whereas like more of, um, what's most convenient, I guess, yeah. food would make more sense than for health. Um, I get why they did it. I just don't appreciate why they put it as like a health. But funny though, it is, it's very interesting that, and I know we've done a podcast about it in the past, is like people back then were a lot more fit, actually, yeah. believe it or not. So out of all the food pyramids, it's not the worst one, I guess, <laughs> but people back then were way more active and you know, uh, these days everything's too convenient for us. Way yeah. too convenient. Adam gets his groceries through an app every week. I do. Shame on you. I don't even do it. Give her. Shame I, on my you. life is super convenient. 
<laughs> too <laughs> convenient. I, I like going to the grocery store. I don't know how you do that. And that's why I'm so lean. Yeah, it is. Because I don't it's use an app. Obsolete. I don't use an app. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably, that's definitely part of it. I bet you accumulated calories burned throughout the year. Grocery stores for you is probably like two to three pounds more than me. I bet you if you went grocery <laughs> shopping in person, you'd be like shredded with abs. Probably, probably. That's the uh, only difference. <laughs> I should I should do that. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so going into this, uh, the food pyramid for health again too. Yeah, and and if if they were to frame it as. Uh, you what know, like, makes the most sense? More more calorie dense, or yeah. to get even just to get in enough calories, I guess. But health is you lost me there. Yeah, exactly. But it, but back then there was no information. There's no Google. There's no this. There's no YouTubers. Yeah. Right. So the information was very, um, and and it was just so funneled through only the news that you kind of just believed them. Right. Yeah. You just believed them. But there this was stuff no pushback. On. Yeah. You know? No social media. No no retweet. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Everything's owned by the same, you know, the same groups of people um, that are being funded by groups of people and they're just pushing a narrative. So it's important to know these things have been going on for years and years and do your own research. And now it's cool now that, that we do have these like independent people, YouTubers, like our voice back then, like doing this, you know, who knows how many thousands of downloads this will get. Right. But uh, you know, it's cool. People are going to see it, you know, and back then we would be like on a corner, sound like a crazy person. The government's lying to you, <laughs> right? Like without any proof and like someone's walking by, like it would just be like, oh yeah, he's some crazy conspiracy theorist on his soapbox over there. <laughs> you know, so like now it's like, you know, there's so many people doing this that they kind of have to be more honest because it's like, you're going to get caught type of mm -hmm. thing. And I think this is just one where they just went, they just overstepped and they got caught real quick with this one. The one, know? the one that's the current one now yeah not, not the one you're just talking about yeah, just exactly. to clarify <laughs> yeah and so um yeah so so anyway so then this this led to the next food pyramid right and i think one thing that you talked about too is people weren't obese then and yeah. and so you know back when the first the first seven food groups were created um, more people were dying from hunger than were dying from obesity mm -hmm. we've actually crossed the threshold now and there's actually more people in the world dying from obesity than they are dying from hunger Right. But you won't, you won't hear that narrative on, on TV, but that's the truth. We've, we've, I mean, almost essentially solved like hunger issues for most of the world, for the larger percentage of the world. Mm -hmm. There's still some, you know, and, uh, and, you know, guys keep sending your money there if you do it. But there, but the, the thing is obesity is a bigger problem than, than, um, than hunger these days. Right. Yes. So, which is a pretty American, like amazing thing that we've been able to accomplish as a human race. Right. Yeah. So, and now we get in the recent years, people saying you can still be healthy and obese. Yeah. And there is a slight bit of truth to that. I think technically, yes. But for how long you're just a ticking time bomb. Yeah. You know, that's why we don't see 400 pound 80 year olds. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? So of course, like if you're 20 years old and you're obese, maybe your blood work comes back fine. Maybe your, your heart rate is fine no blood pressure issues, but it's only a matter of time. You know what I mean? So technically, yeah, you could be, but not for long. <laughs> yeah. You're not, you're not going to get the most out of your life. That's for sure. I think that that's really important to talk about too, because yeah. culturally things have changed so much. Yeah. And, um, and it's funny is that like Joe Rogan was talking about being fat shamed one time and he was like, he's like, I fully agree with fat shaming. <laughs> he's like, because I, my friend told me once I was fat and then it caused me to like really get into fitness and like caused me to like be like, oh, he's right. I am chubby right now. And that's how, you know, we'd always razz each other when we were younger. Like, I don't think kids do it nowadays because it's like mm -hmm. not acceptable. But that's, that's what got me into fitness too originally was two major things. One, I, I broke my arm and my sister said I was fat. Right. And then I like was, you know, probably had some eating disorder because of it when I was like 12 years old but I've basically been paying attention to my diet since then at 12 mm -hmm. years old when I broke my arm and so like you know it not all not all it's bad right but I agree for the most part it is but the thing is we've gotten so far past the other way where it's it's okay to to shame someone like Ashley who has abs who works really hard who follows her diet as in she's too extreme but then when you see a 5x model on whatever there was like this new like underwear ad it was some woke underwear underwear ad and this girl was like she wasn't just obese like her shoes didn't fit her i saw that Did you see Ew. and everybody was uh roasting the the feet because they were like gonna explode out of the shoe or whatever yeah and then she's in like an Ugh. underwear ad and we're just supposed to accept that as that's normal and that's healthy and that's nothing wrong with that and i'm like i'm like no that's that's not normal like yeah. don't nothing wrong with you pointing out that that's not normal and that there's yeah. a health issue there but yeah it's like it would be okay for that girl to say ashley's extreme oh they'll ashley call me anorexic yep, yeah but it wouldn't be okay for ashley to say that you hey it might be a good idea for you to get to the gym and lose mm -hmm. a little bit of weight for your health yeah like, totally Ashley would be like oh my 
gosh, she's a fattest. She's oh, a whatever. Yeah. Like, I mean, listen, I, I don't think that it's, I, I do think I'm leaner than most people for sure. It, I'm not saying this is normal. This isn't average by any means. I don't want to be average, but to cross the line and say, this is like what anorexia looks like. I'm like, shoot, have you seen an anorexia person yeah. with these hamstrings? I don't think so. <laughs> like, I don't think so, man. Like, I think they forget what an actual anorexic person looks like. You put them next to me, like, no, there's yeah. no way, like, no way. I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself bony or anything like that. I'm not malnourished. And it's funny because people in our industry are the most health conscious people and we're very aware of what nutrients we're getting in, you know? We, we take our vitamins, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's, um, yeah, it, it is, it's funny that it's shifted so far to the other end that even somebody that's, like, fit or in shape is, like, too much, too much. Oh my God. Too extreme. So a very fascinating thing. Yeah. That's a, it's a weird, it's a weird scenario these days, right? You almost have to like walk on egg. I, I'm, you know, it's funny is that, um, I've gotten to the point, maybe I'm, I don't know if, you know, what's funny is that like, I've always used to see these like old guys and they just didn't care. And I was like, man, that must be so liberating to just, just not give a shit. Right. Like as an older guy, like, uh -huh. a, like an 80 year old, they just don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they just don't. It's like, how did they get there? You know? And I don't know what it is, but I do think it does come with like age. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little older now and I care a lot less than I used to. So I still stick to my ways. I don't let people like, um, guide my speech, especially mm -hmm. like if I believe in something, I'm going to say it. And if you don't like it, I don't, I don't really care. I think it yeah. just comes down to like, when you're in a spot where you need I think it also, when you're in a spot where you need money, you need to grow or you need to whatever, like you're kind of, you have to act a certain way. Walk on like eggshells. Yeah. yeah. To, to continue that path. But once you've like kind of made enough where you can kind of chill, you're kind of like, whatever, what are you going to do? Like, uh, you know, like, what are you going to do to me? Yeah. And I think when you're 80 years old, you're like, ah, I got social security. I got my house. I'm retired. I'll do whatever I want. Yeah. Like no one's going to tell, what are you going to do? Fire me? You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, what are those situations? But so I'm still going to say what I'm going to say, you know, when it comes to the obesity thing and like that being something that we're supposed to look at and say, oh, that's beautiful. It's not, it's, you know, no one wants to see, you know, guy, I'm sorry, as a guy, no one wants to see giant love handles and, and, and feet that, sh that don't fit in shoes. Like that's not a <laughs> sexy thing. Don't tell me that I'm wrong for not thinking that's a sexy thing. It's not, it's disgusting to me. So, you know, I don't think girls need to be, you know, shredded. You know, actually I told you the like last episode personally, like a little softer, Yeah, but be the like a uh, all season ish <laughs> look, but still, yeah. still looks like an but, athlete. <laughs> but don't, don't tell me that lucky charms are, are better for me than chicken breasts. Don't tell me that a 350 pound woman is, is sexy. And I'm wrong for not thinking that this is human biology. This is what I've been programmed to think, you know? So um, like it's in my genetic code to think what I think is attractive if, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, uh, don't, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where like, where I get really upset and like frustrated about it. Cause I see these things constantly transforming and they don't tell me when someone has reached the apex of fitness, like Ashley, that she's got a problem, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, it's just, it's just crazy to me. You know, all the, like anyone who's overachieving these days is like, they got a problem. He they need to chill if they're overachieving. Yeah. Chill out. He works too much. Is it not? What do you need? <laughs> what, what do you need all that money for Elon? Like, it's like, <laughs> he, it's, he doesn't even care about it. He just works so hard. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just so, so to me, it's just one of those things again. And, in, and I like to put this all together because we could see like as a whole picture of how it's all happening and how it affects our daily actions. But what's, what's crazy about these studies is that you know how we say it, it takes years for it to happen. So if some when they release this seven, this seven food groups thing, right? That happened before when the baby boomers were starting to being born, right? So um, they release this seven food groups thing, and um, you know everyone's thinking, oh, we got to eat more butter. You know that's one of my food groups a day. I mean, there's I'm sure there's some people out there who who actually ate it as a food group equal in proportions to what they should be eating, right? Mm -hmm. Because most people, as we saw, are, are good little, you know, good little students and listen to what the government tell them. I wasn't one of them. But you can see, you know, them doing, okay, I need, I need one seventh of my food needs to come from butter and margarine, right? And so what happened, you know, 20, 30 years later when these actions started happening over and over again, when people started like listening, this is what I should be doing. And they started eating food just like I like Mexican food. They liked eating butter with their food. That's in their culture now, right? It's in their, their normal growing up. What happens? Well, we had our first population fatter than the, the generation before them, right? And every generation since them has been fatter and fatter and fatter, right? But that wasn't a thing. They weren't getting fatter until that point. 
right? So you could see how this guides one thing, right? It yes. guides it guides you know us getting fatter. And now what's what's happening now in the in the modern age? I mean, I couldn't imagine back in the day where there was like a three hundred and fifty pound girl in underwear ads, mm-hmm. right? In the fifties, like who would who that wouldn't work? They would everyone would be like, oh, she's fat, this that, right? But now it's like, oh, you better accept this, or you're you're the one who's got the problem. You're the one who's been, your whole mind has been, you know, screwed up by media telling you what beauty is, right? Yeah. And it's like, no, I've, I've always thought pretty girls are pretty. <laughs> like, yes. I, I've never not thought that. <laughs> like yeah, I mean, even like if you look even back in the day, what you, what people found attractive, I know that sometimes there's trends and stuff throughout where, you know, for example, in the 50s, it was like curvy but fit. It looked like, um, you know, as they got more into like the 60s and 70s and 80s, more like thin. Um, and, and you'll see that like we'll go through their their phases. And now I think it's like the the BBL look. Yeah. The ant body look where it's like, uh, some, something's off here. Uh, but you know, it, it does definitely go into phases, but I think for the most part that healthy look is it, one that sticks, right? Yeah. Just healthy, not overly fat, not overly skinny. Cause you know, I think like even in the 2000s, some, sometimes you got like overly skinny. Have you seen what, uh, Christina Aguilera looked like in the 2000s? Yeah. Like, I think she was under a hundred pounds. Yeah, that was. She the, looks so small. What do they call? They call that look. They, I don't want to say it wrong, but heroin like, chic. Okay, I was gonna say that. Yeah, heroin chic look, right? Yeah, yeah like the models were really like. Yeah, I didn't super, like that. Super skinny. What's crazy? Even, I didn't like that look though, even when that was a thing, because yeah. that was also in like the Pamela Anderson era, right? Well, and, I would say that's. She didn't look that way. No, no, because I, I liked, I liked, <laughs> I liked the Pamela Anderson yes, look. Yeah, I didn't like the heroin chic look. Yes. Right? So I don't know if it's just like a natural thing yeah it was funny growing up like all the girls that i liked were like <laughs> it's so funny to see them now it's like such a funny it like ages me so much. I'm oh, like oh yeah, yeah. Pamela Anderson was great and uh yeah uh so it's funny that even then i was still guided towards like the average yes. the average look well i wouldn't say her average besides most of her was average so <laughs> but yeah it's, it's it's funny how that how that all works out right i think that you know that's one thing that's here to say because just how you said like biology it kind of you are attracted to what like it's in your biology. I think we're just attracted to health. Somebody that looks like they could bear your children. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like not too fat and not too skinny. Um, has has a, a good amount of um and when when I say good, I mean like a decent body fat, not not too lean, not too um fat either, which yeah. is why we like that off season look. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think it's you know, that's a look that's here to stay. So no matter what kind of curves you have or, or whatnot, you'll see little phases here and there, but being healthy is like, I think the standard and yeah. it's in our biology. I think so too. Yeah. Ex- I think that's what Same it is. Same thing exactly with guys, you know, yeah. same thing with guys. You want somebody that looks like, okay, you know, they're, they're sturdy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they could protect me. Um, they could beat me in a race. They're, they're healthy. You yeah. know, I think that's, that's totally normal. And when people try, or the government or anybody else media tries to gaslight you and be like, no, you should be attracted to the 350 pound woman or, you know, it's just like, come on now. Or, or like the skinny little soy boy dudes, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you should, you know, like, no, I don't want, I don't, you know, they don't look like they can bench the bar. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's still in your biology yes. and I know this is going to sound again, like worse. It's, it's kind of the sexist thing, but you do want a guy that could protect you if yes. it's needed to be, you know, mm-hmm. you want to, you know, lift the groceries out of the car and like, you know, things like that. Like, it's still a thing. Like what, it's, for those people that actually go grocery shopping yeah, and yeah. not just get in the app. Uh, I could, uh, I could, I could press the buttons all day. <laughs> get some strong fingers, <laughs> some strong press thumbs. buttons, get the groceries. <laughs> but yeah, it's just one of those, it's just one of those things. I don't think that's ever got to change no matter what people try to like tell us. It's just what we're attracted to, you know? Yes. So. Um, anyway, that's, this is a fun, this is a fun episode. I like yeah. this one. It's totally different. So anyway, let's go back into it. Now let's get to the seventies. You know, there's some more history here. Um, so there was a food shortage. I'm, I'm reading some of this off my phone because I wrote it down. There was a food shortage, which started the green revolution, um, which was then designed to save the world from famine because there was so many, there was so much population, which is, you know, what we're hearing again, the world's going to end. There's too many people here, you know, climate change, all that, right. We're hearing all these same things again. And because of that, um, they pushed, uh, you know, they, they scared the population. Oh, we're overpopulated. We're not going to be able to feed everyone. Let's push this green revolution. They called it green revolution. Now they call it the Green New Deal, right? So the green revolution, what that did was 
um, basically find a way to uh, make high yield crops because they thought we're not going to have as much water. We're not going to have as much everything. We need to have high yield crops that require very little water and have a high yield to them, right? So that's where um, genetic, uh, genetically modified seeds came out. You know, you hear about like the soy and the wheat and it's like almost impossible to find any wheat that's not genetically modified now. So that's where these things, you know, happen. So you take, so, so how did that happen, right? Well, there's basically a couple companies that own all the seeds now and the rights to the seeds, which is a whole thing. If you want to dive into that, you can go into that on YouTube. It's crazy. But basically they created the seed. Now they own the seed and it's, it's really gotten out of control. The poor farmers, if they have these seeds in their, in their land, um, like, so for example, let's say I made, I made the seeds and, and Ashley was just this little farm girl in Ohio, right? <laughs> It's Ac- only farms. In Ohio. This is only farms in Akron, Ohio. So the let's say, thing. let's say I go to her farm in Ohio, and I own these seeds, right? These soy seeds, these wheat that are genetically modified. I still, I own the actual seed. Like, so if you plant them in your crops, um, and if you have to pay me for those seeds, even if you didn't buy the seeds from me originally, right? So if I, you know, walked by and I threw a bunch of seeds in her her crops that were mine. And 10 years later, all of her seeds have now kind of gotten that modified and they, I can test my seeds and they're, they're the ones, they're mine. Um, even though you didn't even know because you're, you know, obviously replanting your own seeds and whatnot, you're getting these high yield crops. You don't know. Well, guess what? I test them and you owe me a bunch of money, right? So now it's gotten in almost all the farms. So it's almost all the farms. So how did that happen, right? How did they push this deal? Well, obviously someone was funding that for these big companies because they wanted that power of having the money driven to them from everyone using their seeds and every single farm there is that they can get their hands on, right? So that's why there's very few like natural, non-genetically modified like soy you can get these days. It's really hard to find. Mm -hmm. It's almost non-existent. And I think too is like some, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing in the sense that like, um, if you look at like the first generation of bananas, I think it is like it, d- they're little shrivelly little things. Yeah. I mean, it's not, and not very tasty. Like I, there's, if you look at the origins of the actual, like, like the original, the original banana, the original watermelon, you know what I mean? So sometimes it's nice. Like I don't want seeds all up in my watermelon, you know, <laughs> like, but, you know, but sometimes like these foods were just inefficient to begin with, just like, you know very strange looking tasteless but now they're you know they got some good flavors too and stuff like that so i think a lot of people use gmo as a bad thing but it's not yeah so you know it's sometimes it's more efficient and makes more sense yeah so i'm a i'm a, that one i think worked out really well in terms of the yield that we get yes. from it so that was but how did the the thing is we have to look at it and the only reason i'm even bringing it up is because of how it got started in the first place what well, got started from some lobbyists pushing this they pushed it through fear of saying we're gonna everyone's gonna die of hunger, and then they got it pushed through, and now these companies own everyone's seats, right? That's how it happened. So that's the same thing with your food. Hey, whatever company is owning, you know, obviously, is, how did Lucky Charms or Honey Nut Cheerios get in this study, right? Well, obviously, there's some money backing it. Hey, let's throw our stuff in there. Let's make it make it pretty healthy. Make it pretty healthy. In there. And obviously, don't make it number one, but you know, if you could make it healthier, then let's say chicken breast. <laughs> Then skinless chicken breast, that'd be cool. <laughs> okay, we'll slide that right in. No one will even notice it, right? Type of yeah. thing. Let's make some obscure argument for, because this one has more, whatever, has more magnesium or, you know, whatever in the Lucky Charm by X milligrams. And we could just push that narrative. We'll just, oh yeah, well, it was because of this, right? Well, I like, it, magne- I like magnesium. I like magnesium. You like magnesium. It's, but yeah, that's crazy. And the fact that it's kind of like a specific name too, you know what I mean? It's like, mm, sounds suspicious yeah right it's It's like so suspicious (laughs) so so i it's it again we're not i'm not trying to like push you in some rabbit hole or some conspiracy thing i just want you to know that hey what you get on your meal plan like has been you know tried and true tested for decades upon decades and it might not line up with what you're seeing from whatever study but I always say to the studies, like, I always want to have an open eye to them. And I I used to really be researched in studies. But as I got further and further in it, I realized, you know, I still haven't seen the study with the 120-pound, 14% Ashley Kaltwasser, right, of 100 of them, who's been working out for 10 years, working out six days a week, following all her nutrition plan, and then going from 17% down to 14%, right? That study doesn't exist. And it's just the reality of things. You know, I always say, you know, show me the, show me the study with the 200 pound bodybuilder, that 6% body fat. Show me that group of people that you got that did that, that hundred of them that you pulled a study from that was valid to what I do. Right. Mm-hmm. And so 
don't show me the study of how this 18 year old kid only needed to work out three days a week. And now our people are overtraining when that 18 year old kid never took working out seriously until that study. And of course he grew more than my 200 pound bodybuilder who's been working out for 15 years. Of yeah. course he grew more. And I think we also touched on before is like with these studies too. And if it's something like a super strict menu, uh, one that even athletes like ourselves have, some of us have hard times following them. Yeah. What makes you think that somebody that's not monitored 24 seven, which let's say if it's a, it's a study that lasts like six months or whatever, <laughs> do you think they're watching them 24 seven? Do you think that person's going to cheat on their diet? Yeah. I, I have a feeling they will because <laughs> even somebody that's tra training specifically for an actual goal, you know, has a hard time sticking to that hundred yeah. percent. So these studies, it's like what the, you say they do a lot on like college kids and yeah, stuff, it's right? Available at yeah. The and then, yeah. you know, sometimes they offer them a little money, but they're not as precise as you might think in order for that to even work, they would have to be like under a microscope 24 seven, watching everything that goes in their mouth, watching every piece of activity they do. So to even make that argument that that's even accurate, I don't know if I buy it, you know, cause we have hard time with, other people's That's like, really true. you know, it's uh, even if they're getting paid, if you know how people are, if it's not being monitored, like in that, that would, aspect. That's a really good point. And I want to bring up another fact to you too. It's a, it's a really, actually, it's a super strong point you bring up there because yeah, I have tier one pros who can't stick to a menu plan year round. And yeah. like, and so here's, and that's a, their job. Yeah. <laughs> that's like literally their job, <laughs> you know? And so, um, when you look at, this is the thing that I've, I've, you know, I've been training since I was, I've been working in nutrition stores and training and creating meal plans since I was 16 years old, which is crazy. More than half my life now. I would say 90% of the meal plans that I gave to someone for free, like friends or whatever that are just like, oh, I just need, you know, I just need a meal plan, whatever. But it was free and I just did it for them. I would say 90% of them didn't get followed because there was no investment into it, right? Now take that one step further and pay them to follow my meal plan, Right. I would say it's less, even less likely they're going to follow it because it's like, I'm getting paid whether I do this or not really. Like, you know, like how do they know, you know, yes. how do they know? You know? So, um, yeah, no, I think that that is, that's a really good point, especially with the athlete thing. Cause yeah, we have athletes that cheat on their diet and send me those emails on Monday. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I didn't mess up on my diet. And I'm like, wait, you paid X thousands to do this program and you can't stick to your diet, but wait, I'm banking on this 18 year old who just went partying and his college dorm. You just want some beer money, you know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly, like, right? Like, and I'm going to use that study to now look at it and then email whatever my coach saying, oh, my calories are too low for my 410 frame and I don't move because I work an office job. And you know what I mean? Like it doesn't, these things don't correlate, you know? And it's especially when you get these things too that are like <clears throat> protein-based. That's another funny one. It's like the aspartame thing where it's like, um, Oh, I'm eating too much protein. It's bad on my kidneys. And I'm like, well, have you ran your labs? Do you know if your kidneys are in stress? Like you're, what's, what's going on with your kidneys? And so, so well, it's, it says it's bad if I have this much. I'm like, well, your, your protein has a macronutrient. It's like the most favorable macronutrient you can have. It's dense. It keeps you really full. And if you're working out, it's better to have a little bit more protein just in case your body can use it that day than to not have it. But it also really keeps you full too. And it's, it has the, the lowest, um, the lowest possibility of being stored as fat than any other macronutrient. So why not overshoot that one? If I have to fill the calories from somewhere, keeps you full, makes you feel like you're, you're eating enough. You have enough protein just in case. And if it's not stressing your kidneys out, why not do a little bit more protein than it says on the, on the requirements. Right. So, um, that's, that's one of those things you have to look at, you know, and it's just like, I, we have to think about these things logically for what we do. And we can't just take like these, I mean, gosh, these, these arbitrary numbers, I, I feel like most of them are just like, just don't even make any sense, yeah. you know, for the average person, especially the average person doing like contest stuff. And you take it even one step farther, the contest stuff, it's like completely useless, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so let, let's keep, uh, I don't know, you have any thoughts on that too, before I jump in this next one? Oh, no, I think, I think we're aligned correctly here. I think yeah. I'm on the same page as you. I agree. Am I, I ranting? Am I no, ranting? Though? It's, no, it's no, no, no. You're, you're doing great. I am, uh, you're basically speaking what I'm thinking. So okay. <laughs> I'm sure a We're, lot of other people feel the same way. We, uh, you know, we, it's funny is that, um, obviously our relationship has grown over the years, but we really do line up on a lot of these same like type mm -hmm. of things, which is, I'm really happy that it is that way. Cause yeah. I would hate to have to like shut up around you. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You Sometimes don't. you got to keep me in check. And if you got to do it, it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. It's like once a year. <laughs> 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 Get a little out there, Adam. You're getting a little out there. Um, 
That's it happens right. to the best of us. That's right. I only lost my mind in 2020 when they were like trying to close my gym. Yeah. I fought. I fought. I fought a valiant fight. I was. I I'm won. glad you did. I won. You know, I'm glad you yeah. did. That was a, that was my one of my most proudest moments Heck of yeah. winning. That was cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. So, um, in the 80s, okay, the World Health Organization. Yeah, that's the same who I was talking about earlier. Um, uh, they were trying to show in a new food pyramid. Um, that you would need to balance your diet differently based on your body type somehow, which made it really confusing to people. But in that in that um, study that they pointed out or that new pyramid that they were trying to point out, they wanted you to get 10 to 15% of your calories from protein. That was their new, their new food study, right? Yeah, I know. 10 to 15%. Not a gain was made. In I mean, years. so I ran some <laughs> numbers here. I ran some crazy numbers here just to like show you. And- yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many times the World Health Organization needs to get things wrong for people to realize that these guys are not like the the uh, the, the the most research promoters of truth, right? and they're very biased to, to different things. But man, this is just another one to show you. They've been getting this stuff wrong since the '80s. So, I mean, I would say the local the local level trainer, even in the '80s, gave out better health information on diet than the World Health Organization did back then, which is really sad to say because they probably have the the same financial backing as like a small country. But when you look at, um, so here's the, here's the math at getting like a 10%. Okay. So if the recommended calorie amount is 2000 calories and they want you eating 10% of those calories from protein, that means they're recommending you getting about 50 grams of protein per day or uh, a third a gram per pound of body weight on a, on a rough estimate for someone who is, um, 150 pounds. So, um, that's, that's, craziness right to the 50 grams of protein right that's like two meals in for most people yeah and so it's like the rest of your meals all rice (laughs) all rice and butter apparently right because the rest of it needed to be fat and stuff too so it's like um so yeah the the numbers here are absolutely crazy um so just based on their ratios i did i went one step further i was like okay let's say someone's eating one gram per pound of body weight per day based on the who's or recommendation in the 80s right and there was, there was information out there. A lot of the protein information we have now is not that new. So some of it is, there's some new stuff, but there was enough back there to say, hey, this is probably not the most ideal diet. So if you were 150 pounds and you were eating one gram per pound and you went to the higher end, the 15% marker, that means that you would, have, you would need to be eating 4,000 calories plus to get the, 10, the 15% ratio of protein in your diet. So I have it at 4,600 calories to get 15% which means that you'd be needing to eat a thousand carbs and they haven't even added fat in yet. Wow. 40. So based on their recommendation, if you were to get the protein amounts needed at one gram per pound of body weight, if you're a bodybuilder, you need to eat 4,600 calories as a 150 pound person. And I didn't add any fat yet. Jeez. Yeah. And then to hit the ratio of fats, I didn't add that in. Um, where's their fat ratios on here? 10, 15 to 30%. So to them, it's more important for you to get fat than it was protein. Right? So, yeah, this is crazy, right? But carbohydrates are not essential. So you have 15 to 30% from fats, which are essential. You have 10 to 15% from proteins, which are essential. And you have non-essential macronutrients, carbohydrates, being the most essential part of your diet at 50%, right? So it's, it's I just want to like show you guys this stuff. It's just blatantly obvious if you do any research whatsoever, like the people telling you these things are not in your best interest or at least are not studied or just don't understand nutrition and shouldn't be doing this at all. You know, I don't know what it is, but there's a lot of really good guys on online. And, you know, you got to understand too, my stuff is more extreme. My stuff is more physique sports. So you're not going to find a lot of data on my stuff either. Uh, but there's guys that are in the middle that can kind of tell you the middle stuff, you know, that are like, hey, this is a, a study said for your optimal health, right? And, and none of them are going to line up with what the who said at 10% of your protein per day um, in the in the 80s, right? So, I mean, that's, Pretty crazy. I mean, I was just like shocked by it. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. I said this to you though. I don't know if you saw that part of it. Mm. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I'm, I'm just asking questions. Yeah. Pretending to be surprised <laughs> just for the dramatic effect of it. Like, you should, wow. You should be an actor, actress. Oh yeah. <laughs> so they, they have gotten a little better. I will say that. I would say um, Harvard did their food pyramid, which was actually, I felt like a, a pretty decent food pyramid because um, they at least included your daily exercise for weight control at the bottom of the food pyramid, which we'll put up on the YouTube video here. Um, and then it, you know, it went up 
for the most part, I would say pretty accurately. Protein is still a little low in there, um, I think, for, for a modern day. But they also had um, poultry in, like, the middle of the food pyramid, middle upper part of the food pyramid. So it's getting a little bit better than just the upper left corner, right? But let's, let's go ahead and go back into um, the food pyramids and, the like, the colors of the food pyramids, too, because even that was something that was paid for. So when they were putting the food pyramid together, like, okay, we're going to put this food pyramid together, right? We're going to put meats. We're going to put them red because meats are red, right? It's going to thing all these different colors of the food pyramid that we've seen. Well, the meat company said, well, we don't want it to be red. Big meat. I guess you call it big meat. Is that, that's kind of funny. <laughs> big meat, we call it. So it's, they said, well, we don't want it to be red because it's kind of like a warning. Because yeah, red's a warning. like. Right? Come on. And then, um, and then Big Dairy said, okay, yeah, we want ours to be as big as possible on the, on the dairy because obviously we're dairy. So we're going to fund this and give it a little. So the big meat, they got their color change and it's not red now, right? Even though meat, it would in, in, intuitively, it would be red. It's beef is red, right? So, but there's no, that's scary. So let's not do that. So the consumers will buy more of us, more of it, right? Okay. Then dairy got in on this, on this food pyramid. Dairy said, um, well, we want ours to be a little bit bigger. And they said, well, they, this is where our food pyramid is. This is where it has to be. We give you as big as block as we can in that food pyramid. They said, okay, well, on the actual description of the serving sizes, say that any meat, any any cheese that's processed, you need to consume twice as much because it's not purely natural. Because you need to get twice as much to get the same nutrient effect out of it. They said, okay, we'll do that. But, so, but who's buying natural cheese? What even is natural cheese, right? So any processed cheese was required to have double to, on their food chart. There's no, there's nothing about it that made any sense. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it was yeah. just, it was just, you need to eat this much of it, right? So they also did that. Then they also had refined um, flour put in the same category as whole wheat flours, right? So they pushed for that. They lobbied for that. It used to be just a very small, at the very top of the food pyramid, it was a very small corner of it at the top and then they ended up getting it put in the bottom because it was easier and it was easier to produce and it was more profit in it so they put it as the same so now we all think oh regular flour is the same as as whole wheat right white bread's the same as whole wheat bread right and that's how the argument was in terms of its like raw value to the to, like fibers and all that stuff too right and it's i guess closer to what uh, to be in the dessert category white flour than the actual well not dessert what yeah, is it it's a re- cake yeah cake closer <laughs> to be <laughs> closer to being in the same category as cake as like uh the equivalent to the whole wheat but you know what's funny is it kind of it kind of is like a these big dairy and big meat it's like they're sponsoring a banner and whoever like spends the most gets like oh no i want my logo to look like this i want my logo to look like this like on this big banner it kind of reminds me of that lark or like a nascar like i'm gonna pay the most i'm gonna have like a big banner but no make it in a certain color because i want it to stand out more or something it's like that it's like and ultimately has little to do with actual nutrition and more of like who's willing to spend the bucks on it you know it's really sad because it's it's framed, and as a consumer, and as a kid growing up, like, well, I just saw these charts, you know? I was like, oh, that's what I should be eating, you know? And as a consumer, we don't know that. We think, oh, the government, like, we pay our tax dollars for this part of that funding, right? But then, well, no, people are paying on back of it to lobbyists, to whatever, um, you know, Ashley's running for mayor. So they're just, oh, hey, here's a hundred thousand bucks. You know, can you, uh, I know you're running for mayor one day. Can you uh, maybe make my food chart a little bit, you know, make it, Make it uh, bigger. <laughs> you know, make people consume more of it. Huh? Mm-hmm. You know, hey, hey, you know, there's a 500 grand. Maybe Lucky Charms are healthier than uh, chicken breast these days. Huh? <laughs> 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 like, yeah, it sure is, Joe. So, <laughs> so it's just something like, you know, I don't want to go too far down this like, like rabbit hole. But it is, these are facts. This is facts of our, our food and how it's, how it's treated. It's a business. Um, you know, people have a hard time keeping their ethics lined up with their money. Um, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing. I, you know, it's a difficult thing. I, I, there's, there's no way around that. I understand that, especially with like these government people, they're not paid that much. You know, if someone's offering them a hundred grand through something, like it's, it's hard for them to say that's a year's salary for them, you know? So it's like, you know, I get it, you know, but it's, it does, it's, I think that the ethics have been a little bit lost in these things. And unfortunately we're the ones that pay the price of it. And we have to at least just look at these things. But when it comes to the, when it comes to the competitor, we really need to look at him and be like, okay, is what, I'm doing really unhealthy or is my, is my guidelines on what I think is healthy so skewed from, from money and backing of other these companies that it's like, 
I shouldn't even pay attention to this base that I've been taught my whole life, right? Which it super sucks. I mean, it super sucks to like think that. You know, growing up, I thought the food pyramid was great. I've always been, I've been in nutrition since I was like 12, you know? And so I've always thought that was, you know, the thing. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely in my growing up when I didn't know enough about nutrition, it guided my, my ways of doing things. Um, when I was wrestling, I had to make weight and I would barely eat when I was wrestling, which is like the least healthy thing you could do when you're that age. I'll, you know, I was like, I was wrestling and I had to make weight. And, um, you know, now if I had to make weight, I would eat like pure protein, do my cardio. I would keep my muscles, still work out all that. But back then, you know, I didn't think protein was that important because it was what was told to me, you know, it was, it was like 25 years ago. And, um, I ate just bread. I just ate bread and I was like, okay, that's makes me lighter. <laughs> you know, it's like it's just bread and that's what I should be eating most of so at least I'm getting that in but I only need to eat a little bit of it so I can't afford the rest of the foods you know and so um yeah I mean I I got I made weight <laughs> I made weight I had no muscle but I made weight but it's funny is that like you know if you know if if nowadays I'm sure I would have been on YouTube and learning from it you know learning at a younger age which would have been super cool but um it's it's what guides people and then on the other end of it you know luckily I had to make weight but on the other end of it there's that 15 year old girl who's watching these, um, these obese women saying, you know, you could be fit at any size. And the government's telling me to eat, you know, one category of, of fats and eat all lucky charms. because It's healthier than chicken breast. And I got proof, you know, wh who are you going to listen to, you know, some meathead like me, or are you going to listen to government? Like that's a pretty tough argument to beat, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I'm not going to win that argument for most people. So, um, it's unfortunate because it's, it's like you could see the path, like you could see where it's going, you know, and yeah. I don't think, I don't know if there's any stopping it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's like so difficult, especially with social media. It's a blessing and a curse because you can always call it out, but you'll also see so much evidence that conflicts with each other. I mean, I think the best example is coffee, right? You hear on the news or something, coffee's good for you. And then next week, coffee's bad for you. Then it's good. Then it's bad. <laughs> Same thing with a whole egg. It's good for you, but only the white part. No, the yolk, it's great. No, you shouldn't have it. Like, it's like every other week, it's something different. So I can see why people get so confused and everything. And, you know, it, it definitely makes its way over here to this industry as well. I think mostly with the sweetener stuff. And I always hate hearing the argument. It's chemicals. There's so many chemicals in that, that meal you have, like chemical, like, cause I'm yeah. using like sugar-free syrup or, or something that like a flavored powder, protein powder, something like, listen, everything's a freaking chemical. Like we're breathing in chemicals, <laughs> breathing out chemicals. I'm a chemical. You're a chemical. <laughs> Everything is a chemical. It does, whether it's a man-made chemical or an all natural chemical from the periodic table of elements, doesn't make it more or less healthy. Like I'm sure you don't want to consume radium, for example, like, or <laughs> lead, right? Those are the purest chemicals there yeah. is, but everything at the end of the day is a chemical, you know, it's like, yeah. I hate that argument. I'm just like, yeah, it is. What are you saying? It's a dumb. It's a dumb argument, especially when that's that's the funny one. Because um, I get those. You know, I'm obviously good buddies with Kenny. Kenny K. He's always like the Natty or Not videos, and he's like, you know, Natty or Not, who who's this girl or whatever. I'm like, dude, who's natural? Have you ever drank Red Dye Number Forty? <laughs> like, no one's natural, dude. What are you talking about? You ever like? Who, no one even lives their life in a way where you could be. Like everything is is enhanced everything even your seeds you can't even get a natural seed anymore a natural banana <laughs> like it's like dude everything's not natural i don't it's think like, you want natural bananas <laughs> i know they're like this big <laughs> <laughs> probably like rock hard and like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's funny that that's uh that's even a thing but um no you're you're right on that on all those on all those things especially so um, what, what do we have to conclude on this one, Ashley? Is that about it? I would say, you know what? Don't believe everything you see or hear at face value. Do your own research and use your own common sense because yeah. you're going to hear so many conflicting evidence. I'm sure like you can find a, a few articles that are in favor of this new food guide pyramid and then some that aren't, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I think common sense isn't as common these days, but you gotta, you gotta really do your own kind of research. You know, it's, it's tough out there. Cause there's, there's, I mean, gosh, God, God bless Hugo. He's, he's, um, He's a little gullible sometimes. And he'll find like an article like, no, Ashley, like they say, like, if you consume olive oil, like it doesn't count as a fat because it doesn't get stored as fat. I'm like, Hugo, come on. So even like, you know. He's so sweet. <laughs> I love awesome. you, 
He's such, a, he's such a good soul. He's yes, a good soul. But you, know? You, you know, you just got to do your own research. Yes. Don't believe every article you see or every study that's being done, you know, because you're going to find pros and cons of every study or every food. Yeah. And then look at the history of the companies that are telling you these things and how they're switching their opinions on things from from one day to the next. And with the same information, you know, um, I think that one of the biggest like outliers of that is like the who and they've they've gotten so much wrong over the years. It's like all credibility has gone at this point. I mean, I, I think at one point during the whole pandemic thing, there was like, oh, no mask. You don't need one. It's not going to help. And then I was like, oh, no, you need a mask. And I was like, oh, you need two masks. You could even triple mask. And I was like, oh, no, you know, actually, we saw this other study. They're not that useful. You could take them off now. Um, <laughs> and then it was like, what was it? It was like uh, there was a plane one, which was really funny. Oh, no. Oh, on planes, you don't need it because the, the air is filtered good. And at first it was like, oh, no, you shouldn't have be on a plane. And I was like, dude, you guys. Like, just stick to the story at this point. No one believes anything you're saying. And now you're telling me what I should consume? Like, you can't even get one thing wrong, which is easy to figure out. Mm. Like, it's like, so these these guys, man, they, they get everything wrong. So make sure, just make sure you are exactly what Ashley said. Like, do your own research. Don't listen to, you know, even me. Like, do your own research on it. I, you know, I'm, I always try to provide, like, honest information that I can, that I can source um, and this is just one of those ones where I'm like, Hey, these are all facts. Look all these things up. I'm not the one just saying this. These are all things that actually happened. Um, it's not a, a side, you know, and I think that's what, one of the things is too, is like, they always like divide you into like groups and you're like, Oh, this side, you need to think this way. Oh, you're whatever you need to think this way. And I'm like, no, there's common sense everywhere in each side. <laughs> like it doesn't matter. So believe that, you know, believe the truth. That's all you need to believe. So anyway, uh, hopefully this is, you could look at this and then say, okay, is my, because some of these girls on, on the main reason we've been talking about this, because some of these people on like, you know, um, that are just competing, they're like, oh, this is so bad for me or this is so whatever. I'm like, based on what? And that's the important thing I think you need to take this from is, is your diet? Uh, yes, obviously the physique, getting that lean, not the, is never going to be the best thing for you because there's like an optimal health body fat when you're getting past that. Yeah, it's not going to be the healthiest thing for you, but is it as detrimental as you think because of, well, based on what, you know, based on the 2000 calorie you know, 10% protein diet that the who said you should have, or is it actually, you know, unhealthy for you? Cause you, you can see it in your labs and whatnot. So anyway, that's what, that's what this is for. Um, I hope you guys have the longest, healthiest life and you do listen to your own information that you find and you find what's best for you. And uh, I guess we'll leave it there. Fun. I had a lot of fun with this so one. So much fun. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.